god. <laughs> no. Um, I can't. No, I mean, I guess there's a couple of ways to define it, right? There's what everybody says, which is the dictionary definition, and it means equality, and that's cool, and that's fine, and it's interesting um, that so many people, of course, agree with that, but then don't want to take on the term. So I think, you know, that that's a pretty good baseline definition, but it does beg the question of equal with whom feminism or practicing feminisms is a way of dismantling hierarchies of all kinds. And I feel like feminism asks the gender question and I'm interested in gender and I'm always wanting to ask the gender question. that the biggest problem is people sort of like lumping like all feminists into one category and I think that like just because you're a feminist doesn't mean you can't disagree with each other. There's a lot of disagreement within feminists and that's like okay, that's what it should be. I think that people sort of see feminism as sort of like a rule book, like a, a list of things that they can and cannot say and people are really like, I want to be able to say whatever I want and freedom of speech and you know, I don't want to be super politically correct. So I think people associate like feminism with like, political correctness, but that's not what it is. It's just about being equal. I always liked the concept of feminism. I truly believe that people can be treated equitably and should be. I think I was hesitant when I started getting into feminist literature that it left out women of color, and so I was really resistant to take the label. But as I aged and started reading more and learning, and then especially I think with the results of the election, of making it adamantly clear that when something is important to you that you'd stand up for that. I think it's amazing that women of color specifically have not been recognized ever. Like since the 1800s and slavery, like we have never truly been recognized. I would uh, describe myself as a feminist, but particularly a black feminist. And that's because I am uh, interested in the ways that all oppressions of women happen. So not just some that are uh, in equation to sexism or equal pay, but the way in which race plays a part and the ways in which uh, disability might play a part, the ways in which, uh, uh, you know, uh, our, our uh, sexual Realities might play a part. Well, I think uh, for one, I've always been interested in the visuals of women uh, that appear in popular culture and entertainment. And so uh, always seeing the ways in which women were represented or uh, looked at and just the disparity in, I guess, choices for women to play these certain roles. Like they were always particular kind of roles uh, for a long time. And a lot of that is starting to change now, um, which is good. But yeah, definitely looking at women in uh, media culture was like, okay, something definitely isn't right here. Uh, but then particularly how black women have sort of been, um, you, you know, fighting two struggles at once, basically. So not only the women's struggle at the particular time it was coming about, like the women's suffrage movement, but also we were having the civil rights movements and we were stretched between uh, two different movements or fights per se. I was really thinking about this the other day of why is feminism itself so important. I think as we move toward an intersectional movement and we consider that women are not this separate other, like we are people and everyone should be part of this experience too, that this is the radical advocacy of equity for everyone. Women think of this more often than men do, of like little things that we do are provocative. Clothing that you wear instantly becomes provocative. Hey, what's up, girl? How you doing? Somebody's acknowledging you. Oh, that's 
talking about sexuality is provocative. And these are things that everyone is doing. Why do you feel like it's so taboo? Especially as a feminist too, of like, I truly think that I'm equal to men. You know, you're supposed to be smiling. Women are expected to the minute we leave the house, we are expected to be smiling and available for whatever men want to say to us. And don't get me wrong, hello is fine. But a lot of these men, they're not just saying hello. They say hello, and when you say hello back, what that means is that's an invitation. Just another example of a lot of f feminists that have an a la carte attitude towards it. Like, where's it gonna go next? So you're telling me then, if I compliment you on the street, it's some sort of abuse, no matter how I choose to do it? <clears throat> that means if you no, don't compliment me, no, hold on, hold on. If you don't compliment me when I walk by, that's abuse. You didn't bolster my self-esteem. I wanna <laughs> find you. I wanna start a coalition mm -hmm. against women who don't compliment men. What's like funny is that you as a man, what your problem is, is that you really should just be no embracing and welcoming to, this, to the fact that women are saying, hey, we don't like this. Not arguing well, why we shouldn't. If listen, we say we don't like it and we are demonstrating that, then you should actually, as a man who, has a man who is a man of honor and wrote a book about this, should be saying, well, let's discuss how we can make you all feel more comfortable. No, and how that's I, not as a man happen. who says that I have the, class, the need to help and video. talk to my, my brothers well, about look, this. The I think we have this idea that um, feminism and these issues are, are you know, women's problems and, and I think a lot of men, even well-meaning men, feel like, oh, that's not, that's not my issue, like I'm not allowed you know, to, to sort of be involved. And the thing is, not only do we, need the, we, do we need their help, but it's their issue too. Like these problems that we have with gender are just as I mean, not just as, I mean, I, I still think that women are getting the worst end of the deal, but, but men are being, you know, hurt by these um, confines just as much as women are. We're very, very attached to a binary um, because the, like, particularly around masculinity, the, 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 the worst thing you can do as a masculine man is to be girlish, right? That's to be a pussy. That's to throw like a girl. That's to be a fag, right? So it's all kind of tied into sexuality as well. That's being too tied to your mother. So I think there's a real anxiety about sexuality and about um, being able to declare yourself in a powerful position and anything that kind of deviates from it is going to um, make people really uncomfortable. I mean, people base their lives on really specious to me ideas of what women do and what men should do. I feel like I simultaneously see awesome things happening and then we're taking four steps back. So there are two big steps forward and then one back. I think there are some incredible things with pop culture happening about recognizing other women shine and giving them the credit for that. But then there are also moments where, for example, like the Dakota Access Pipeline, like where were all the women? Where were we as we watched? Native American women give birth on land that was going to be taken from them. Um, I think back to movements with Black Lives Matter, like where were all of the women? The McKinney, Texas incident, where were the women? So I feel like awesome things are happening and we're taking these great strides, but then I also realized, I think it's when we hold hands in a line and we take a step, how many people's feet are still grounded or how many women are not wearing shoes or how many of our trans sisters, friends are not also taking that step with us. Making sure that our, uh, our fight is not just for ourselves, but who else needs to be included in the fight. And that, may, and that, and, and honestly, I think a lot of white women who were feminists in the beginning may have been a little bit more conservative. And so when you speak about things like LGBTQ women, okay, so what about them? What about trans women? Like, do they play a part? And do they have a role and a space in your feminism? If they don't, you don't have the right kind of feminism. Do men have a place in your feminism? Because men certainly do. Because they are the stakeholders in a lot of this. Like they are the, they're sometimes the way in which things have to take place. Like look at who has the jobs, who has the, you know, a lot of the choice, especially white men. So where's the space for everybody in your feminism?